Orland Curtinback began playing organized hockey when, at the age of 10, his family moved from Cudworth to Prince Albert. By the time he was 18, he was the leading scorer on the SJHL's Prince Albert Mintos with an impressive 321 points in 188 career games. In 1957, Curtinback joined the Flin Flon Bombers and helped them to a Memorial Cup. To be picked up by the Flin Flon Bombers uh, for the, for, at that time, it was allowed because of the... Uh, uh, the, uh, the lack of population in Western Canada compared to Eastern Canada. And uh, should be noted as well, at that time there wasn't, uh, for instance, Montreal and Toronto basically, I think they ran a, controlled the league pretty good, but they were able to bring players in like Murray Balfour here from Regina, and the best players from across Canada. So uh, for us to go against uh, the whole Ottawa Canadians at that time and beat him in, in seven games was unbelievable. Little town of Flin Flon. He turned pro the following year, joining the Vancouver Canucks of the Western Hockey League. He scored 54 points in 52 games on his way to winning Rookie of the Year honors. With Curtin back, the Canucks went on to win the league championship that same year. Curtin back spent the next few years bouncing between various NHL clubs and their minor league farm teams. By 1964, though, he was playing in the league full-time. His NHL career was somewhat average. He became known more for his physical play than his goal-scoring ability. In 1970, though, he was selected by Vancouver's new NHL franchise, also called the Canucks, in an expansion draft. It turned out to be a triumphant return for Curtin back. He was immediately named team captain and became the team's leading scorer for the next two seasons with 56 points in 52 games in 1970-71 and 61 points in 78 games in 1971-72, both career bests. I ended up at Vancouver in Bud Poyle and uh, this uh, turned out to be super because uh, when I was in San Francisco with Bud I had played 25-30 minutes a game and uh, uh, went very well in, in Vancouver uh, in terms of uh, ice time and scoring and all the things that I did going back to when I played junior. We had a tough club as well so it didn't matter whether we went into Philadelphia or Boston, we held our own, we weren't being, you know, we weren't pushed around. But in terms of, uh, of abilities, that's another matter. But out of that, there were some very good players uh, that came out of that, Bobby Schmatz, Saskatoon boy, and, and uh, Rosaire Paymont, and, and so players that went on to start them. After retiring as a player at the end of the 73-74 season, Curtinback moved into coaching. He worked with the Central Hockey League Seattle Totems for one season, then moved on to the Tulsa Oilers. With the Oilers, he won a league championship and Coach of the Year honors in 1976. He returned to Vancouver to become the head coach of the Canucks from 1976 to 78. His last head coaching job in 86-87 was with the BC Junior Hockey League's Richmond Sockeyes, and that resulted in another league championship. I, I went on to coach later on and uh, with the Canucks and, and the minors for them and so on was the uh, knowing who the players are, knowing who you want in the dressing room, and I think the National League, like all the league, do a very good job now of trying to find the, you know, the, the players that uh, if there can be a problem, uh, when they're making $5 million a year, how do you move them, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, the big, big changes now. In 2010, Curtinback became the first player inducted into the Vancouver Canucks Ring of Honor. As of 2012, he remains an active member of the Canucks Alumni Association. I think one of the um, enjoyments coming from, uh, from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, and then going to play, I have uh, my oldest daughter uh, born in Vancouver, second daughter or second child daughter born in Pawtucket, Providence, Rhode Island. Third uh, child born in uh, San Francisco, California, and uh, fourth child uh, and so on down the line and back in Toronto. And, and uh, but it's just the opportunity of of uh, playing in Boston and and the East Coast is so different, and then playing in San Francisco and that's so different. Installed in the Saskatchewan Sports Hall of Fame on June 16, 2012, Orland Curtainback.